All right, as we continue on with the data recovery videos, what I have here is a wide range of selections for you homeowners. And this is basically what I use. I do have something that's not on camera here, which is called a NAS or Network Attach storage device. I have the Synology. It's a two bay thing where it takes two mechanical hard drives. They can take a lot more mechanical hard drives if you want and you configure it and such. So one is a backup of the other, like for instance, RAID 1. That's for a future video. But for right now, to get you started in backing up, I want you to select something like what I have here. Now, I did a separate video on this, which I'm pretty sure would have been posted before this video. But this one is my latest, which is gonna back up my Synology. It's a 16 terabyte version. But I have these divided into two different groups. We have mechanical hard drives and solid state drives. The difference between the two, mechanical has moving parts and much, much lower uh, read and write speeds. And the solid states are just the opposite. No mechanical moving parts. They're very more rugged and, and fast. They're really, really fast for, for, for the most part. And But I want to just kind of give you some options here for you to choose from to get you started on your backups. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about these and what might be your best choice, stay right there. So if we concentrate a little bit more on the mechanical side, it's going to be cheaper by the gigabyte or even by the terabyte to buy these by the size. So if you look, you gotta figure out first off, how much data do you wanna recover? What is your total size of data? Forget how big your hard drive is, how much data do you need to recover? And kind of go off of that, how much future proof do you want? Do you want to be able to keep adding to it how many versions of your backup do you want and stuff like that. So I know you may not be familiarized with how to backup yet, but I want to get you familiarized with what you need to buy first, because that's in a way the first step. You need to know what size you need. Now, this is just all my opinion. This is not a professional opinion. This is my personal opinion. This is what I do with my, my units. We can see we have first off a docking station. This will accept either your 3.5 inch mechanical hard drives or your 2.5 inch mechanical hard drives or your 2.5 inch solid state drives. And you can see you have uh, a light on the front with a button that just says HDD1, HDD2. It's just a push button to turn this whole entire unit on or off. If you have something occupied in either space, either one's gonna come on or they're both gonna come on. There is no turning them on individually. And you have a little ejection button right here. Now they do make these in single bays. They make them, um, they probably make them in quad bays or maybe even more. This is just one I happen to have. I've had this for years. On the back, you kind of just have a 3.0 USB connection right there. That's a type B and you have a barrel jack for your power. You take your drive, you can see where the connections are. So you have a connection right here. You have a connection right in this area and it's as simple as put it in just like that and push down. Now to get it back out, just hit your eject button and you pull it out. You can put a different one in. Same goes for your three or 2.5 inch. You just put it in the, the slot. You can see how it goes in right there. Take this back out. You can see how it goes in the empty slot. Doesn't even push down on the, the door for the bigger one. You put it in the rear one. This one, it doesn't matter which one you put it in. They're gonna read the same. Speeds aren't different. This is not a cloning device. Even though you could clone one to the other, it's just gonna be really slow over USB. Even though we're staying on the topic right now of mechanical hard drives, this also works for your solid state drives. Just an FYI. So as an option, you can use one of these. If you pick one of these up, you can buy your external 3.5 inch and you can get these all the way up to they're coming out with a I believe a 30 terabyte version in the very, very near future. Now that's the time I'm making this video. We are in uh, beginning of 2024 right now. Now, if we just skip these two for a second, we move over to this, like I said, well, I think like I said, but I did a separate video on this, which may have posted before this video. This is a 16 terabyte version. It is by Western Digital. 
and this is the Elements version. Like I said, 16 terabytes. You basically just get a USB connection in the back and you get a, a barrel in the back, a Kensington lock, an on and off button. So if you wanna leave it hooked up to your PC, you could, I don't recommend it, but you can leave it hooked up. And basically what's in here, it's one of these. That's all it is. And it has kind of like a, probably a special connection in there. I've taken a Seagate one apart before and you can replace them if you really had to. I don't know how to get into one of these. I've never really had one apart, but that's, I mean, the weight is virtually the same. So when you have any one of these mechanical hard drives plugged in, it is not a good idea and don't do it. Don't move the hard drive around while it's reading and writing, while it's even plugged in. Plug it in, you should have it set down before you plug it in, but if not, just set it down and don't touch it. These mechanical hard drives are sensitive to fast movements and especially dropping them. You drop them, it's probably the end of the road for it, depending on the height of the drop and what you dropped it on. So one other thing to mention about this is you can get these in pretty much the max that they make the uh, mechanical hard drive. So for this particular one, I saw it as big as 22 terabyte. So you can get those in that size. Now, when they come out the larger ones, I'm sure they'll make other variants for suiting that. As we move on, we got a couple of options here. This one is by Seagate. This is a four terabyte, I believe. It is a four terabyte, and I write right on the back normally of them. This is a read and a write of 140 megabytes a second. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about speed, but I'm not going to get into too much depth. But I did say these are slower. These are faster. Now, like on this particular one, I've got the reads set at 230 and 227 for the writes. So you can kind of get an idea of what they are. This one's a little bit slower, but this is a four terabyte version. Very portable. It's small. You can see I'm, I'm not a very big guy, but... It fits in the palm of my hand and very portable, very nice. Now I use a lot of these for backups still. Mechanical hard drives still are great. This one is by Western Digital and I have written on the back uh, something that I have labeled, but or something for one of my units. But anyway, this one is a five terabyte version of it. This one actually is type C and it's got a flashing LED in the front to let you know that it's on. I believe this one has this one has a different connector, proprietary connector there for the USB. Now, these small ones usually only go up to about 5 uh, terabyte. Basically, they have a 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive in there. You can see the size and how it is the same size, right? Now, as far as the SSDs go, there are far more options in combinations that you can do uh, in my opinion you can go as far as just using a thumb drive now this is a sandisk extreme professional this will get speeds twice as fast as anything right here just about it might be a little bit less than twice as fast but you're talking you know let's just say two 250 megabytes a second this will read at about almost 400 megabytes a second it's no joke. You get this in up to, I think, a terabyte right now. As we move down, coming this way, we have our 2.5 inch. Now, this is just a, I believe, a 500 gigabyte. Yeah, this one's small, but you can get these in pretty much all the way up to 8 terabytes, between 4 and 8 terabytes. And right now, 8 terabytes is the max you can get in SSDs for consumers, to my knowledge, at the time of this video. And... This is just, actually this is only 128 gig, but this is just an example. I have others that are one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte, but that's just an option. And when you get one of these, these are not delicate. You can drop these and throw them across the room and they'll pretty much still work. You use these, one of these that are made for the internal. You go and you buy one of these five to $8 connectors right here off of Amazon and you plug it in. USB, away you go. That's it. Now we're gonna step up a little bit in uh, performance and price. Now this, 
I've done a separate review on this and you've got to check out the review on this. This is the SanDisk G40 Professional SSD. Now this is Thunderbolt capable and it is extremely fast. This will do on Thunderbolt connections, it'll do up to 3000, actually I, I hit thir over 3100 megabytes a second. 3100. 200. Actually, this reads a lot slower than that, but average 200 megabytes a second, 3100. So you can see how much faster you can transfer data. Now, it comes with a price tag. This is near $400 when you could get, and this is only four terabyte, when you could get one of these that are, oh, right here, 16 terabytes, four terabytes, $400. Uh, I paid 100 or 209 for this, but that was in a separate video. They're about 260 right now, but a little bit more than half the cost, but four times the capacity. So this is very rugged. It is water resistant. It's IP68. It's practically waterproof. You could drop this in a bucket of water and still be fine. You can run this over. It has a 4,000 PSI pressure breaking, whatever you want to call it. So all kinds of stuff. This is very, very, very rugged. Awesome little unit though. You can also, between Thunderbolt and you can also use Type-C uh, getting up to 10 gigabits per second. And so that's about a thousand megabytes a second. Now, if we move over a little bit more, we have, let's just skip this and we're gonna come right to here. This is an M.2. Now this is an M.2 NVMe. It's not SATA, it's NVMe. This will, NVMe can range anywhere between like 1500, even maybe a little bit slower, 1500, all the way up to 15,000 megabytes a second. Just depends on what type of M.2 you buy. But nevertheless, these are gonna be a lot faster than anything here, a lot faster. And what you could do with one of these is you could buy, you could get one of these and then you could buy one of these. And what you do is you just, Stick it in there. Get your cable, connect it up, connect it up to your USB port, and boom, you have external hard drive. Done. Now the same goes for, this is a cloner, but you can also use it as a dual M.2. So you could put two of these guys in here. Now I've done a separate video on these also. Now it's spring loaded right there. It's a little different than this, but it's spring loaded. You pull it down and it's locked in right now. Now you plug in your USB to the front and you can turn your power button on and boom. Now this is, this is also advertised as a cloner. So if you had your M.2s on your board and one failed or you, you want to clone one, you put one in the other bay because it says source and target up on top there. And you just hit start, it's gonna clone it over automatically. But you can also use this as a dual, um, you know, drive setup. So if you had two of them, you plug it in, plug in your computer, now you got two drives. Now this is a NVMe enclosure. So you can put one of these in here. Now this one's actually IP68 rated. This is one of my favorite. This is by uh, Sabrent. And I'm just trying to get you a little shot there. By Sabrent, it has a little LED indicator there. This will do, I rate on the back always. This is for my C and, or A and C drive backup. This will do NVMe or SATA M.2s, by the way, but it's got a little thing on it. Rotate it, pull it off, and you can see that I have a Samsung 970 Evo Plus in there. The way to get these out, you just, there's a little rubber tab. You just pull over to the side. It pops up. You can see that it's popped up like that. You just remove it. How much simpler can it be? So whatever cable that these come with, just make sure that you kind of either label them or keep them together, keep them plugged in because the cable length and the actual cable that come with it is meant for it uh, just because of speed purposes. I know I left you with a ton of options here. And again, I don't even have the Synology up here, which everybody can share that. In other words, everybody that has a computer, you can actually set up 
and so everybody is on the same network and you can see that so that's just something you can save like pictures and videos and uh you know certain files that you want to share with everybody across the board that is another option but i think one of these has got to work for you now i'll put a few of these or maybe all of these quite frankly uh except for this this is only 128 gigabytes this is like worthless but i will put a bunch of these down below in the link so you can go ahead and check them out i'll label them pretty pretty well so you know the difference i'll put them in groups so i'll have a group of mechanical hard drives which is going to be your cheapest option to the amount of storage just be careful don't drop them um also mechanic or the solid state ones i mean i more recommend these because they are more reliable they're more robust they're faster and I just believe in the solid states a little bit more unless you need a ton of storage like the Synology that I have. I've got a couple of 22 terabyte drives that are going to be going in it very, very soon in the next couple of weeks because I'm running out of room. So anyway, I got to do that. And but like I said, I'll leave these down below. Go ahead and check them out for yourself. And don't forget to subscribe. Consider subscribing and hit that little bell icon next to the subscription icon that way you can get notified for any future videos that i do post and also give this thing a thumbs up for me would you please and until next time take care